Hey folks, welcome to part three of my recap of the 2023-2024 Realton Cup Open. If you missed the first uh, two parts to uh, this series, definitely check those out. Um, in this one, I'll be reviewing my final three games from the tournament, rounds seven through nine. And uh, going into round seven, I was on four out of six. And I'd um, just been kind of getting into the tournament. I had three straight wins, feeling pretty good. And I uh, finally was paired up in a game. So I was playing against Grandmaster Jan um, Subelj. I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly. Um, from Slovenia. And yeah, I prepared a pretty sharp line uh, for this game with white that ended up happening over the board. Um, but that wasn't necessarily great for me because, um, well, you guys will see, ended up being a position I wasn't totally uh, super familiar with. Okay, so I played um, knight f3, d5, knight c3, c6. He goes for the semi-slav. And I prepared this really sharp line, starting with queen c2 and bishop d2. And basically the point of this one is that when black castles, white castles queenside, which is very, very rare in uh, the semi-slav to castle in this kind of like Moran type of position. Um, but I saw there were some games... Um, in this line, Magnus played this in, in rapid. Looked pretty interesting, so I decided to to try it for this game. It's very hard to find anything against the Semislav in general. And um, basically the idea for White, of course, is to play super aggressive uh, setup, try to go for e4 at some point and get a position with opposite sides castling. I feel like it's a nice surprise weapon because if Black isn't prepared uh, to play this line, then they're gonna have to you know, spend a lot of time like just trying to figure out how to play this position, which is definitely not so obvious. Um, so my opponent played b5, which definitely feels like one of the most logical moves. If I take on b5, then I think black has a number of options like bishop to b7, c5 is also possible. Basically, this isn't what white wants to get into where we're castling queenside and just immediately opening things up for, for black. Um, instead, the idea is for white to play e4 which is kind of cool, threatening to push e5. And uh, I think the main idea of my prep was that if black played b4 here, hitting the knight and, uh, and the pawn, then white just goes e5 anyway, takes, bishop takes c3. Eventually white wins back the piece, and yeah, we get kind of a sharp middle game um, from there. So instead my opponent um, played knight takes e4, and... I took d takes e4, and basically this wasn't really part of my prep, like, I checked this position quickly, I checked a bunch of other positions and lines, like, you know, here black has a bunch of moves like c5, e5, b6, a6, and so on. So, of course, I didn't have time to check everything in the position, and um, so here I just kind of assumed, okay, white should play queen takes c4, and which you guys can see is a mistake, um, and it feels like a normal position, like, where, yeah, again, we have this opposite sides castling. White's going to be playing for, like, bishop to d3 and just playing for the king side. And it's a pretty sharp and uh, seemingly playable position. But apparently, yeah, this move is already wrong, and white should play knight g5 here uh, in order to take the e-pawn with the knight. And then black plays maybe something like knight f6, knight e4, for example, take, take, and then this position, I think, is about equal. And that's the best you can hope for um, these days when you prepare a, a sharp line. Um, surprisingly, and I spent a little bit of time here, like I considered knight g5 during the game, but ultimately I just went for like the most logical queen takes e4. Um, yeah, surprisingly, this is just not a great version of this situation for white, um, although it is pretty thematic for the game to kind of go this way, and black just already gets a good version of things. So, takes bishop takes c4 and I guess this was like some kind of faulty prep I'm not sure um yeah how exactly to describe it but um I guess this would be fixed if I had you know played some training games in this line or something rather than just preparing it you know for the um, first time for this game um but anyway in the game okay I didn't think I was necessarily worse here just yet um and things proceed quite logically knight f6 I went queen h4 and here black played knight to d5. And this was definitely a serious thing for me because at this point, okay, I'm well out of book. Black is offering the queen trade. I feel like in this end game, I'm definitely not any better. Black is going to go like bishop b7 and push c5 pretty soon. Um, and I felt like I'd be kind of fighting for a draw. Um, but otherwise, I wasn't sure where to put my queen here because 
For example, if queen g4, then I get hit with f5. And uh, yeah, the queen starts running short on squares. Queen h5, then g6, for example. And uh, it's not so obvious where the queen um, can end up. Um, here I think I was actually mainly worried about knight f4. I think, yeah, knight f4 first was the problem. Because g6, queen h6. But here it takes, takes, followed by g6. And then white's queen is um, kind of getting kicked around a bit. So, yeah, I wasn't sure what to do here. I decided to play queen e4, thinking that my opponent most likely wouldn't repeat with, with knight f6 and, and make a draw. Although at this point, I didn't feel like I'm really better, so I don't think I would have uh, hated this, this option. Um, but I was pretty sure he would just keep playing the position because things optically look fine for black. As it turns out, I definitely should have just bailed out into this endgame. Takes, takes, and then I think either knight e5 here followed by bishop a5 or... Bishop a5 immediately, and basically things are about equal, but white has to be, I think, pretty pretty precise to, to hold the balance here. Um, but yeah, I should have gone for the endgame objectively, because here in the game, actually, things go bad surprisingly quickly. Queen e4, black plays a5, just a very logical move, setting up like bishop a6 to trade off the bishops, and also just kind of advancing on the queen side to get some more uh, play. Um, I went bishop d3 here, not really sure what else to do, I'm just kind of still trying to poke at the king side, but pretty much I underestimated black's reply here, f5, I drop back, and now queen b6, and okay, my idea was to provoke f5, I thought I'm getting some kind of pressure against the e-pawn, but it really actually isn't worth much compared to black's play on the b-file, and black's bishop is actually just kind of passively holding this pawn, but it's enough to keep a bunch of my pieces... Um, like any rook that comes to the e-file as well uh, at bay. And this line on d5 is also super strong. And here, yeah, I basically um, didn't know how to deal with this upcoming threat of rook to b8, which looks super, super annoying. Um, so I totally underestimated this plan of just like very simple queen b6, rook b8, and all of a sudden it's not obvious how to defend uh, the b-file for white. So yeah, here I realize I'm already seriously much worse, maybe just losing. I tried to fight on, but yeah, the position is really just very, very difficult um, for, for white here. So bishop c4, this is what I came up with after spending a lot of time in b3. Black gets to play a4, king b2. And luckily I'm not getting blasted here immediately with a b3, a b3. Um, but clearly my king is quite weak and it's just a matter of time before um, black can kind of break through. In the meantime, I haven't achieved much at all on the king side and in the in the counter attack um, so h6 the game was quite sharp but essentially my opponent played i think quite accurately to uh to win this one i played rook g1 here okay just playing for for g4 h6 kind of surprised me but black basically stops knight g5 in a lot of positions and um yeah it makes it much harder for white to to do anything in the meantime the counter plays almost always uh, gonna get there. So I tried rook g1, c5, g4. Black throws this in, ab3, ab3, takes on d4. I took on f5, and now rook takes f5. And uh, yeah, here I could take on h6, but basically I feel like this is not very effective at all. Black can go rook f7 here. I think rook b7 is also possible. And uh, yeah, knight c3 is coming very soon. Queen a5, queen a3 check. And okay, I took the h6 pawn, but I just have very little play against uh, g7 here. Um, so I didn't see much upside in that. I tried this move knight h4, which I thought was an interesting try because if, for example, black plays like d3, um, going for rook takes f2, then I would actually have the sacrifice rook takes g7 check. The idea being just to bring the king forward, I take on f5 with check, e f5, rook to g1. And here, things are actually very, very unclear, like white sacrificed a piece, but black's king is opened up, and my queen has um, different ways of getting into the position. So this would actually just be a total um, total mess. So that would be essentially a dream, because I felt like my position is uh, basically losing. And the same thing on knight c3, I think I can take on g7 here, take on f5, and then this would be... Um, super messy, but 
Yeah, and since my opponent just plays rook f7, just super, super solid, avoiding any tricks with rook takes g7. And yeah, here I basically didn't know what to do. I end up taking on h6. And at this point, I'm just hoping for um, being allowed some kind of sacrifice, uh, like with bishop takes g7, rook takes g7, and then getting my pieces in. Um, but I'm basically not in in time. Like if knight c3, for example, then I think I go rook takes g7 here, bishop takes e6, and this at least looked uh, very, very messy to me because black's king is definitely opening up. Um, king h7, I think we have like queen d3 check, for example, because my queen is hanging, so I have to be very, very fast here. Maybe there's other moves as well, but something like this and... Yeah, it's just <laughs> total chaos, but it looked like this is uh, my best chance. Um, but my opponent didn't really let me have any fun here. He just goes queen a5. And now I don't have any sacks on g7. Black is turning queen a3 check, followed by either knight c3, or if the king comes to c2, then queen a2 check. Um, there's like rook takes b3 stuff, bishop a3 also as well. And yeah, basically I'm, black is just getting their first. Queen c3 is also... A huge threat here in case of like rook a1 um so yeah it's essentially over I, I don't think white has even a significant try here i went rook d3 just to kind of reinforce the the b pawn so queen a3 i at least slide over but black just goes rook a8 and now he's turning queen a2 check followed by like queen a1 and then rook a2 and yeah i'm just getting totally mated here and i'm never in time to uh do anything on on g7 so i tried b4 basically just hoping for knight takes b4 so that i could then get rook takes g7 bishop takes e6 and okay some complications but of course black plays bishop takes b4 uh, i go rook to b1 now that a2 square is uh, is covered but knight c3 and yeah here i decided it's probably a good time to resign um because i just i have no threats and black is ready to take a bunch of material or just mate me with queen a3 and yeah it's essentially just uh Totally hopeless here. So, unfortunate game. You know, I feel like I just got kind of walloped um, from the opening. And it was almost like uh, a mistake in preparation. Because I didn't check this line super carefully. And, and see that I got to go knight to g5 here. To kind of keep the position at least equal. After queen e4. White is already, um, white is already worse. And, and fighting for equality. And then, of course, maybe my biggest gameplay mistake was just... Uh, sticking in this middle game where white's chances are just much worse and not just going for the end game where okay maybe white is going to be a tiny bit worse but objectively yeah that was that was the thing to do um so unfortunate loss that would put me on four out of seven then in round eight i was paired against uh young fide master edgar mamadov who i think is maybe 13 or 14 years old i don't remember um but yeah this is actually quite a quite an interesting game so I'm black in this game, and he plays the Fianchetto Kings Indian, which I don't think, yeah, I don't think I was expecting this one in this exact game. And uh, after some thought, I go for pretty solid line with bishop to f5. Now, this does allow white to offer a repetition with knight h4, and then go back knight f3, which my opponent ends up doing. And uh, yeah, that was very, <laughs> I was a little bit worried about that, because I didn't want to make a draw in this game, but I also didn't prepare the Fianchetto line, so I wasn't super ready to play a different system either. And I didn't get the vibe that my opponent was going to make a draw, because he's like a young player, ambitious, he's having a decent event. Um, you know, making a draw is not like, yeah, it doesn't seem like something he is going to do. But then he repeated once, and yeah, it made me very nervous. Um, not nervous enough to play a different move here, but yeah, I felt like it would be quite risky to go into something I'm not ready to play so I went bishop f5 again kind of expecting you know that we're just going to get knight h4 and and uh, a draw um, he does go knight h4 bishop c8 and then castles so he avoids the repetition at the last kind of possible second he's also spending a bit of time already um, I play this move a5 here which I think is just a reasonable kind of move the idea is that eventually white's going to have to bring the knight back to f3 i can develop bishop f5 the reason he is kind of repeating this way is that if white were just a castle black's idea is to play knight e4 here and yeah if you're not like ready to face the system as white it is a little bit um 
and knowing you also don't want to walk into something that you're not super familiar with. So he leaves the knight on h4, castles, black is forced to kind of make another move. He played knight f3, I went back, bishop f5, all right, I'm like, now maybe he'll repeat, but no. Knight h4, bishop c8, and he goes h3, so he avoids the repetition um, again. Um, but here I play e5, since the knight's not on f3, and I actually feel like this ends up quite nice for black. Um, because after knight f3, knight c6, we basically reach a theoretical position where we've made extra moves h3 and a5. And uh, it's not totally clear whether this helps black or not, but in the game, I feel like it does because a5 is a very useful move, um, whether white takes on e5 or goes d5, which is like their two main options here. Whereas h3 is actually kind of a target in some lines. It's not obvious that this move helps white. It definitely helps in some positions, but in other positions, it's just an extra target for black to uh, attack, especially after we get d5, d5. Bishop e6 and queen c8 is a typical thing that black does, and here it hits the pawn on h3, so I definitely felt like this was in black's favor. Um, so I was quite happy to actually get a game and feel like I got a reasonable version of like a typical uh, king's Indian. So I go bishop e6, knight d2, and yeah, basically we have like a very similar position to um, like the main line theory, except with h3, a5 included, which again, I think mainly helps black. So h6 here. I think this was all fairly logical, knight e4, bishop e7, knight d5, and uh, white has some nice grip over the light squares, but if black is able to get f5 in and e4, then generally black is doing fine. Um, knight c3, and here, yeah, I kind of, I definitely started miscalculating quite a bit, because I, I spent a lot of time here, I was like trying to figure out a move, because I, I felt like white wants to go like queen b3, rook d1, it just felt like kind of a critical moment. Um, I really just should have went for this e4 move, which I think is very natural, just giving black the e5 square, and uh, of course closing off white's uh, bishop. But somehow I ended up playing bishop to c5, and this was just based on a miscalculation, because I didn't realize after knight b5, white is actually threatening to take on c7, basically no, no matter what. <laughs> because like I can defend this pawn a million ways, like rook f7, rook c8, um, but the problem is white takes on c7 anyway, and uh, I can't take back because queen takes d8 comes with check. And then white wins the exchange on c7. I don't have another piece to uh, recapture the knight with. And this is because I put the bishop on c5. When the bishop is on e7, knight b5 is not really a threat. Because in after the queen trade on d8, the bishop recaptures on d8 and defends c7. So I kind of like did this to myself with bishop to c5. After knight b5, I'm like left scrambling. Um, fortunately, I'm actually, I figured out I'm still okay with rook c8, because after white takes on c7 here, uh, the c4 pawn is also hanging, so I trade on d1, rook takes d1, bishop takes c4, and I'm able to restore material equality. But it's not exactly the position I was hoping for, because I didn't get a chance to get e4 in, white's bishop is open now, and, uh, yeah, I think actually the situation is just very, very close to equal, but of course I was hoping to play for more. So bishop d5 takes takes, rook fd8. I started to try to kind of squeeze this endgame a little bit, but it's pretty hard. Things are very equal. The only thing I could really hope for is somehow using my bishop versus the knight. But yeah, this is easier said than done. And, and white's position is pretty, pretty healthy. You know, rook c1 coming and so on. So I did try one chance. I went knight d4 here. And uh, white takes on d4. I go rook takes d5. And now my idea is try to win the d-file, get rook versus bishop, some endgame I can play. But knight to b3, I think really accurate move, hitting the bishop and the pawn. Rook takes d1, rook takes d1. And so this was my try, bishop to b4. Um, and my idea here is that I want to play a4 and kick the knight and then come in with rook to c2 and uh, definitely get some activity. So in case of like rook d7, for example, then... I think a4 here would be quite strong, and then if rook takes b7, I'd have to find this move bishop to e1, which, not sure if I was totally thinking about this during the game, but yeah, basically I'd have to find it in order to uh, try to play for the win. And then the rook comes in either to c2 or c1, probably c2, and yeah, there's a lot of uh, counterplay against uh, white's pawns. Um, but unfortunately, of course, white has... A couple ways out and my opponent found one of them with rook to c1 
And uh, yeah, I can't really avoid the trade of rooks because the rook is coming into c7. And after rook takes c1, knight takes c1, I was hoping to play this for a win, but yeah, I was not really meant to be. Um, white goes f3, e4, takes, takes, knight b3, and yeah, it was basically there was never any time to um, prevent the knight from getting in, but now the knight is going to c2, white's putting the pawn on b3, and basically just setting up a fortress, like um, the position that we end up getting is just no way for black to uh, to do anything, so knight c2, king f5, b3, and uh, yeah, here I can like do whatever I want, but my king is never getting in on the queen side, which would be necessary to try and win the game. It's also not getting in on the king side. And uh, yeah, because of that, white can just sit and wait like king h2, king g2 here. And yeah, there's just no way for black to uh, to get in. Um, so we made like a couple moves here, but yeah, I just ended up offering a draw, I think after, after I forget what I played here, but I made some move offered a draw and... Yeah, it was uh, it was accepted. So interesting game. Um, I was a little annoyed that I wasn't able to kind of create more pressure and try to play for a win. But yeah, I felt like my opponent defended well, especially finding rook c1 with not a ton of time on his clock. And um, yeah, maybe there was some way to um, push this end game a little bit in a little bit more challenging way. I'm not sure I'm going to have to look at it again but yeah i wasn't able to find a ton of chances in, in the post game analysis um where i could really you know pose some problems to uh to white um okay so that takes us into the final round to so this point i'm on four and a half out of eight and last round i'm playing white against another um fide master 2300 um, this one older though not a kid so i was feeling a little bit more confident <laughs> that i would be able to win this game and uh, yeah, I decided to play the Trumpowski here. Um, it seemed like a reasonable option for this game. I try to throw it in, you know, like maybe once a tournament, so people don't really know when it's coming and they gotta they gotta prepare for it. And um, yeah, we end up getting a pretty sharp line right um, off the the bat. So e3, c5. I take on f6, g f6, d c and this line is like super complex because white gives up the dark squared bishop which is definitely a good piece in this position but black has to kind of figure out like long-term uh structural difficulties so it takes e6 black is going to win back the pawn soon i went knight f3 knight d7 and yeah i wasn't well prepared here at all just kind of understood some some basic ideas but i go c4 uh takes bishop takes c4 and objectively, I think black is totally fine, but it is a little bit annoying to play with these double pawns in the future. Like, you put the bishop on g7, you go f5, but eventually white organizes an e4 break, and then the king is always a little bit weak on the uh, the king side. Um, this game ended up going a little bit differently. So knight c5, I went queen c2, bishop to d7, uh, stopping any kind of like bishop b5 check, which could be annoying. I castled. And uh, here my opponent goes b5 and, and rook c8, which to me felt like a little bit uh, ambitious because black is just not like castling and just leaving the king on e8 and developing the queen side. But it does feel logical, like the rook is active on c8, it's hard to imagine this is, this is a bad move and black's pieces are definitely quite active here. So um, it doesn't feel like uh, white can really punish this. Um, so I realize there's not a ton of discovered attacks against the queen here and after some time I played rook to d1 um, just putting some pressure on the d file threatening bishop takes b5 and this seemed like a reasonable move and yeah something kind of strange here happened you know I was expecting a6 and then I'm not sure how I would continue from here because if I go knight c3 then I was a little bit annoyed by knight a4 maybe rook d3 I could um, try something like this playing for rook a d1 um, if b4, there's rook takes d7 here, I think, um, with uh, very, very sharp positions, something like takes, queen a4, bc3, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure, maybe queen takes a6, I don't know what's um, what's going on here, maybe it's just bad for white after c takes b2 actually, but yeah, it felt like there were some um, chances here, rook d3 
one as well seems like a possibility um yeah even takes takes followed by rook to d1 as well could be could be strong um so i wasn't totally sure but anyways that's what i was expecting and i would figure it out but my opponent plays after some thought bishop to g7 and uh <laughs> i was like so confused this is the last round game so it was a uh, a bit earlier than than normal i think everyone was still waking up so it took me a couple minutes to like try to understand why can't i just take the pawn on like i just played rook d1 why can't i go bishop takes b5 and yeah i couldn't i couldn't see how i'm losing so i take the pawn and um yeah it turned out you know i think my opponent just just kind of blundered just you know wasn't like super into the game yet and yeah just didn't realize that i'm trying to take and of course, black can't take back because of rook takes d8, and black doesn't get nearly enough for the queen here. Um, knight c3, for example, if nothing else, rook d1 is coming out, and yeah, white is just winning. Um, so, bishop takes b5, black just castles, and just like that, I'm up a very healthy pawn. And yeah, I feel like, okay, I should definitely try to convert this one. So I like how I play this um, for the next couple moves, knight c3. Queen e7, I trade on d7, knight takes d7, and now I pushed e4. To me, this felt quite logical, because now it forces black to have to deal with ef5, if they ever want to play f5 and open up the bishop, which of course I think black would like to do, but then they're kind of um, ruining their king side. So knight b6, rook d3, rook c5, I just try to bring my pieces in, uh, queen e2, getting off of the c file h6 now at knight d4 and f4 i feel like this is just a very um good inclusion just taking some more space and here black goes f5 so now the game starts to get a little little complicated it's no longer like technical and yeah i start to go wrong here i should have just taken the pawn um black's idea is to take on d4 here and then go rook takes f5 uh, at least i i believed but white's still a very healthy pawn up here and black's king is very weak so White's advantage is, is pretty huge, um, and I think this would have just been the easiest way to uh, to play the game. I decided I wanted more, so I played e5 here, like wanting to keep the bishop closed and playing for some g4 breaks, but yeah, objectively this wasn't, uh, wasn't the right call. Um, but anyway, knight c4, I go king h1, just still continuing to try to improve my position. Queen b7, knight b3, rook c7, h3. Now black goes queen b4. Actually, a5 here was also annoying. So already, like, black could have generated enough counterplay. It's almost like a Banco type of position where, um, yeah, it'd be really hard, I think, for white to use the extra pawn. But my opponent ended up going a little bit wrong here. Queen b4, I go rook d4. He goes back. I think, again, a5 was better. Um, now rook d3. I'm just kind of trying to improve my pieces using this rook to uh, defend the knight, and then this rook can, of course, always activate with, like, rook d8 or something. Here, black played queen b6. I think because on the last move, I could have taken on c4 and played knight a5, but earlier in the tournament, I had a game with a very similar um, piece configuration, like queen, uh, rook and knight against rook and bishop, where I had an extra pawn, and I realized something like this actually could be... Um, very, very unclear. Like, black just takes on f4, I take here, king g6, then black takes on e5, and yeah, I basically had this endgame before. I'm like up a pawn, black's rook and bishop is very active, and I learned my lesson that this is just fine for black, so I shouldn't I shouldn't go into this. I think that was round, round three, that, that game I'm mentioning. So I decided not to try to bail out, just keep more pieces on the board. My opponent avoids this with queen b6, and yeah, here I just go for it with g4. Um, and my idea is that after takes takes, like the knight gets the e4 score, I'm playing for g5. And uh, to me, this looked like I'm getting a ton of play against black's king. Um, of course, black actually shouldn't have taken on g4. Apparently f6 was much stronger here, which I did not consider. I'm um, just leaving the pawn on f5. But that does kind of make sense once you, once you realize that the pawn on f5 is definitely doing a good job defending black's king. Because after takes, takes, now the diagonal is open to the king. And there's a lot of potential tactics. Um, so the game continues queen b7, king h2. And here black plays f6. So now this is move 30. I didn't have a ton of time here um, to figure out these complications. But I felt like I had enough to really do my best and try to calculate. 
Um, but yeah, at this point, things started getting very, very messy. Um, so I considered a lot of options here. I was mainly looking at a couple of exchange sacks, like takes, for example, bishop takes, and then like queen takes e6. But yeah, I couldn't quite make this work after like bishop takes d4, rook takes, because um, if knight takes and queen takes b2 comes with check, queen f3. Basically, yeah, I couldn't find anything convincing here because I, I'm not mating black's king. The best I can give is a perpetual check. Um, but then black on their turn is almost always starting at least a perpetual with queen f2. So I remember that was my first thought here. I also considered rook takes c4 and queen takes e6. But then, um, yeah, again, when I looked at it more concretely, I couldn't quite make it work for white. Like bishop g7, I think, rook d7, queen f3. And uh, yeah, I remember not being able to find any anything clear here either. Uh, so eventually I go for this move, queen c2. Just making things really um, awkward for black's king. The idea is if black takes on e5, then rook takes c4. Uh, wins on the spot, because I have rook d7 and winning the queen. So black plays king g8, which uh, I kind of expected. I go rook d8 check, king f7. And uh, yeah, here again, I think I already had my idea in mind, but I yeah paused again to calculate. It's a very sharp position. And yeah, basically white has a number of good opportunities and I kind of missed all of them. <laughs> so I decided to take on f6, bishop takes f6, and I went for this line where essentially I miscalculated. So I played rook d7 check, forcing black to take, queen comes into h7, bishop g7 is forced, now queen g8 check. And uh, basically, I just missed the black and play king f6 here. Because um, if king g6, I'm taking on e6. And this is mate. And if king g7, I can just take on c8 here. And uh, I'm up a pawn. Um, but I have a ton of threats like rook e8, queen takes e6, queen takes g7. And black isn't in time to do anything like queen f3 because I take here. And uh, yeah, I just knew white is winning here. Fastest is knight b5 and queen d4. Or Black's King is just getting mated, but yeah, there must be a million other moves as well. Um, but yeah, when I play this combination, I real, didn't realize Black can go King F6. And now the difference is after Rook takes C8, Queen F3, I'm not actually mating Black's King. In fact, I'm lucky that I'm not losing here because my King is also uh, super exposed and Black is threatening like check, Knight E3 and I need to be, yeah, I need to make sure I'm giving a perpetual. So luckily for me, I'm able to kind of bail out here with rook f8 check. Black has to take, I take, and yeah, I was expecting black to play rook f7 here. I would take on h6, and I am kind of fortunate that I have a perpetual here, but I, I found the circuit. Check, king d7, and queen b5. And this was the only way. Otherwise, the black king can kind of escape, but here I'm always in time to give a check either from uh, b8 or from g5, and yeah, there's no way for black to get out of the checks. If there was, then it would just be game over because rook h7 is coming and I'm getting mated. But yeah, the king isn't able to uh, to sneak out. Um, so I thought, okay, maybe we would go down this way, but we ended up just repeating here, king g6, queen g8, and uh, draw was agreed. So this was quite disappointing because I felt like, you know, this was just my game to win. Like it just up a pawn from the opening, like beautiful position. I felt like I was playing it well. And I was very close here. Just here I had to find... Um, any number of, of winning ideas. The strongest, which I think was definitely findable, um, was uh, after king f7 to go knight to c5, which is a really nice move, hitting the queen. If rook takes c5, then there's rook d7 check, uh, winning the queen, um, and threatening to come in with rook d7 next move, followed by knight takes e6. And I think this really wasn't so hard to find. I think I was just very, very hung up on these lines um, starting with e takes f6, bishop takes f6, and, and then rook d7. You know, I thought it was winning, and granted it was, except for the one move I missed. Um, but yeah, this was stronger. I think rook takes c8 was the simpler option here, um, where after queen takes c8, I have like either knight b5 or knight e4, and uh, the knight comes, uh, or is threatening to come to d6, so black can't really move the knight from c4, but also I'm pairing like rook c3, and so yeah, either of these moves were uh, strong as well. Um, I think there are a 
couple other very decent options here. So yeah, basically e takes f6 was a big miscalculation, ends up uh, costing me uh, about half a point. It certainly wasn't the easiest uh, position to to convert, but okay, if my calculation was better, I think that I should have uh, I should have managed. Um, so that rounds out the uh, the tournament. Kind of a unfortunate finish, you know, one loss and and two draws in the final three games. Final score was five out of nine, I believe, or uh, actually five and a half. Um, Wait, now I'm confusing myself. Final score was, yeah, five out of nine. Um, and uh, I definitely lost a couple of rating points, maybe like seven, eight points. But some interesting games overall. Okay, I felt like I ran into a very strong and underrated kid in, in the first game. That was unlucky. Then the only other game where I played up, uh, or felt like I was playing up, was round seven against the Grandmaster. That one, the prep, did not go so well. Um, and the rest of the games, you know... The, Looking back on it, you know, I made different kinds of mistakes, some strategic, uh, some calculation based. The last two games, definitely making more calculation mistakes as I uh, likely got uh, uh, quite tired during the tournament. But um, yeah, clearly lots to work on, especially after this event and the uh, open in uh, Sitges near Barcelona earlier. Um, Lots of games to actually just go back and, and review deeper. I'm going to be analyzing and annotating all of them and uploading them to uh, our site for the training program. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and then working on my chess from there. I think it's very clear from these tournaments, like my calculation needs a lot of work as well as just like my play in uh, complicated positions. Uh, my openings need help. As usual, man, games could be better. So I'm very, very motivated to work on my chess, but of course there's... There's a lot uh, to do. Um, so, yeah. Um, but in general, life is good. I'm looking forward to playing a lot more tournaments this year, uh, 2024. And I definitely had a great time playing in Europe. Playing one round a day is, in particular, uh, quite enjoyable. So I'm going to be looking for tournaments uh, to play in Europe uh, this year as well. Um all right, thanks for tuning in. From here, uh, it's back to training for me. I'm working on my King's Indian course uh, for the dojo, but yeah, also going to be working on my chess and analyzing my games in general. Um, thanks for tuning in, following the channel. Uh, do drop a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the future. Take care.